Biden infrastructure bill, it seems like for the most part, markets kind of a muted reaction to. Yeah, we've been playing into that for quite a while. And you've seen, you know, some of the reactions looking at like specifically copper. We thought that it would have got an extension upwards on that. But it looks like a lot of these markets were already building in to the rollout of the infrastructure plan. So it's kind of a wait and see, look for other economic data and look forward into this Q2. Okay, so kind of already priced in. As you mentioned, this one had been coming down the pipe for a while. We're really just getting details right now. And there's more details to come, apparently, I'm hearing in the next few days as far as some of the specifics. But ultimately, I mean, what does this mean for products, these, these metals that we've been watching recently, which have come under fire? Not necessarily gold, because that you could kind of put in a different category. But in terms of the industrial metals, they're oftentimes to, uh, are tied to this infrastructure package, expectations that, well, copper, silver would benefit. But but again, they seem to, well, just kind of be in a bit of a holding pattern here right now, Phil. I guess one could argue this maybe comes with some of the strength we've been seeing in the U.S. dollar. Yeah, they, they are in a holding pattern right now. But look at the last quarter, you had copper up 13.5%. You had platinum up 9.5%. We believe that copper will go will have a breakout to the upside. Look at a weekly chart, pull up the, the pennant that we're seeing there. It should break out to the upside. And we believe that copper will have a multi-year supply shortage. So we do think copper is one of the best industrial metal plays out there. So we like any kind of pullback on copper below 394. We look at that as a support and a buy area. And around 415 is where we're kicking out that as a trading vehicle. Going into like platinum, it's been in about a $30 range, 1163 on up to 1193. That's been a real easy tradable range. EV vehicle sales continuing to pick up more companies, more auto manufacturers going into that space. And silver, it's too hinged to the gold market right now. If you look at the gold-silver ratio, been pushing up, it pushed through 70. It's really, it, it's just been weighed down by gold and gold's been, you know, just a dog down 9.5% on the first quarter. We're playing it more on a trading vehicle, 1681 key level support on gold, 1740 key level resistance. Okay, I like that. A pretty quick run through in terms of uh, where we are as far as uh, platinum um, and, and we're talking about copper, silver, gold. What about palladium? Because I noticed kind of in a similar situation in terms of what's playing out with platinum, it has been bid and, well, much like what we're seeing here in terms of copper, kind of in a bit of a holding pattern, holding near these uh, highs up around this 2800 level. It really had its breakout in it in its peak once we saw a little bit of conflict and some geopolitical tensions between the U.S. and Russia, Russia's largest manufacturer. So if you're trading uh, palladium, you definitely want to have like a Google alert going <laughs> on any kind of escalation of geopolitical geopolitical tensions. Okay, speaking of, uh, I want to have a Google alert related to geopolitical tensions escalating. Crude energy markets are one of those products as well that you're going to want to stay dialed in on that. And then that kind of ties back into what's playing out this morning in a focal point for traders. OPEC Plus, uh, where do you guys stand, Phil, in terms of expectations from uh, this meeting? Is it a two-day meeting today? I'm trying to figure out, or does it just begin today? And we could actually get an announcement today, apparently. We should get something later on today. We should okay. get some verbiage out of uh, OPEC. And basically, they are not going to do anything to derail the recovery that we're seeing. We believe that o that oil is going to be one of the best performers in the second quarter. Um, we're looking at it as a value zone right around 58.50. We think that immediate term upside price target, 65, $66, uh, will be seen here over the course of this quarter. We see that the, you know the recovery there kind of rolls out with with uh, a lot of uh, pent up demand on, uh, on you know, travel. And as we continue to roll out the vaccines, we'll see more consumption of gasoline and of oil. And that's where that underlying demand comes from. Yeah, I mean, we're really hearing of that uh, reemergence trade, spring training or opening day today, baseball. I mean, they're going to have fans in the stands, uh, um, uh, not necessarily full capacity, but certainly people are moving around quite a bit more. And ultimately, this is what we're seeing now. Uh, uh, one thing I wanted to get your thoughts on here is uh, one of the things, again, in terms of these commodities, Phil, and kind of tying back to what we just talked about earlier as far as uh, copper losing some of its momentum to the upside. I mean, the dollar plays a role in terms of some of the strengthening aspect, especially when you tie it back to rates on the move higher. I mean, where does this play in terms of what you guys are looking for in terms of some of these levels and continuation of some of this bid activity? Do you see the dollar weakening or just not necessarily a headwind at this point? Yeah, we believe that it's going to be a terrible quarter for the dollar. And okay. we believe that other foreign currencies are going to do much better. The euro currency, Canadian dollar, Australian okay. dollar, 
all going to do better. If you look at some of the other currencies, the reason for the strength behind it has been the weakening of the euro. Pull up a chart of the Japanese yen, Swiss franc. They've been watching just, it closely. Yeah, they just been terrible. So, but we believe that the dollar index is going to run out of steam. So we are going to advise clients to start um, playing the downside of the U.S. dollar. Anything above this 93 handle. Okay, real quick, a couple charts here just to support what Phil is just speaking to the weakness in the yen. Mm -hmm. If we could pull this up, we've been dialed in on this, Phil. I'm glad you reminded us of it again here recently back down to levels we haven't seen since March of last year. And then ultimately, just to take a look at this dollar bid activity, notice how it kind of adds to some of the losing of momentum to the upside at the very least in terms of crude. This will be something interesting to watch if the dollar rolls back over, if crude can regain some of the momentum to the upside. Phil, before we let you get out of here, I wanted to get your thoughts on while we have another week until we get the Wazoo report, I think it's next Friday, but beans seem to be getting ahead of the data here. A big breakout, a nice move up recently, or I should say a nice rally recently to this upper extreme. They've been trending higher as well, much like what we were just talking about in terms of some of these other commodities. And ultimately, this feeds right into that inflation narrative. If we continue to see commodities on the rise, uh, again, we in theory should at some point start to see some inflation a result thereof. But talk to us about what you're seeing in the grains here as we are now just one week ahead of this closely watch uh, world agricultural supply demand estimates on uh, next week Friday. Yeah, huge revisions on planted acreage. I mean, we're seeing bigger, bigger drop on corn. So corn breaking out to the upside, ending stocks much tighter than what were anticipated. I think if you're going to play it, corn is going to be your leader. Soybean secondary. Wheat anywhere below 550 on the Ch July Chicago wheat. I think that that's your downside max. There's too much pent up demand here for you know the agricultural markets, and that's what's going to roll into when people start going to the grocery store. They're going to see their bills continuing to go up from here. Yeah, we've got wheat, which has been coming off just a little bit. If we could pull this chart for just a second, I want to show uh, the move lower here in terms of wheat, but uh, we were just showing beans a second ago, but here's beans again, and yet to break out here, but still holding in the teens, and take a look at corn. As Phil mentioned, this is a breakout to the upside. Phil, uh, we're keeping close eye on the jobs data here right now. Um, what are you looking at in terms of potential catalysts, aside from the OPEC meeting, now that we have the infrastructure bill, uh, as far as some of these commodities and what should we be watching for as a potential market mover in the next couple of days? Look at the continuous decline on those initial claims. If you go from like December on out through March and into April, it's been, you know, an eight handle, seven handle, now a six handle. And I think it's going to continue to get better as long as we don't derail and the vaccine continues to roll out. Big, big build in the hospitality sector as that comes up, as we see more reopening. I mean, look, you know, as soon as the White Sox get going, we're going to be down there. We're going to be seeing vendors, restaurants, things like that. And so I think that the jobs recovery is here. We're far from it, but I do anticipate this can be a great quarter for jobs.